Okay, there's one thing that I wanted to bring to people's attention, and that's uh, what does kind of block out our horizon. Well, it actually does block out the horizon. And, uh, and then we have the misconception of underlit clouds. <clears throat> um, that's one thing that <laughs> very easily debunked um, when you're doing tons and tons of these observations. <clears throat> and this horizon is a very much deceptive um, because if I have a mirroring effect occurring, it's, this mirroring effect can be up close, um, and then again, it can also be much further away. I, I like to do all of my observations from pretty much a low perspective, um, five to six feet down to 28 inches. Now, I've had my camera set at, you know, 28 inches off the water. I've had, actually had it set even lower um, where my tripod was in the water. Um, and I'm ruining my tripod, by the way, and it's not an easy one to, um, you know, get, and it's not uh, cheap. It's pretty expensive. Uh, they come out of uh, um, Italy. Uh, Man Frodo... I believe it is uh, the manufacturer of these tripods. It's a professional tripod. Um, but <clears throat> my big point is, is uh, number one, water reflects light. Um, also, too, I want to bring to people's attention that actually there's part of the atmosphere that reflects light. Um, one of my last videos with... Uh, um, the moon halo, there's a plane that flies by, it leaves a contrail, chemtrail, chemtrail, um, and that chemtrail is reflected back up to the clouds above it. <coughs> so how does that happen? We know the light doesn't have the bright light that the, the sun has, so it does tell me that the sun's light can be reflected back upward. Um, now, I've slowed this back down to normal speed right here. Um, and what I want to say, too, is light blinds you. There's a sunspot, and you're going to see it coming up here shortly. Um, you see it slowly coming into visibility. That's because the top part is overexposed due to it being so damn bright. Um, but the main thing... You know, you'll see here shortly is when I zoom in, um, all of this, uh, well, as it's hitting the water, see how it's spreading out and you can see the reflection of the sun. That right there is blocking out the, the horizon. Um, this is like an upturned edge. It's in the, it, And it's a mirrored edge. So it's almost like having a, a mirror lumped up on an angle upward on the horizon. And that right there will block out a lot of your horizon. Actually, it blocks out quite a bit <laughs> um, because it's going a long distance. The farther out I get, the more um, ev everything is uh, being compressed. Um, it, I'm not using the right words for that. But um, another thing is, is I could have been in a little better focus. Um, but I did have some distortion going on out there that this particular day. But you can definitely see there's multiple sunspots here. Uh, I get it in focus here, but later on I zoom in and I lose part of that focus because I didn't get it focused in time. Um, but coming up right here, now you're going to see this reflection of this sunspot come up and... The same thing. It vanishes into its own reflection. That's because all the information is getting gathered up, bunched up, and you can't... Um, I mean, the information is just all jumbled up. It, it's not going to appear. Plus, you have this uh, perspective where everything gets so far away, it just vanishes again into its own reflection. Now, you might say, well, why is this so wide? Well, it, a lot of this is distortion, too. A lot of this is a distortion. 
and this is just how um, a flat surface and a flat upper surface will um, what's the word I'm looking for convergence everything's convergence and uh, that's a uh, pr very pretty and it <clears throat> you see how it vanished above the horizon above the water that's because the horizon really does go out much further and then we have uh, the other thing here is the light being reflected back up to the clouds now if the light is reflecting back up onto these clouds on the bottom right I mean this is what the Globers globe people say that this light is being reflected upward or shining directly on those bottom of those clouds so my question is is what's reflecting the light off of all of these clouds these are lower on the horizon further away now I will be pointing uh, directly back to the east and give you a view of this uh, you know all these lit up clouds uh, behind you I mean this is what I always say turn around and look behind you um, we actually should be seeing a big shadow of earth being casted above us as soon as that Sun hits the horizon um, it almost should get instantly dark um, except for you know if you looked up you would see some light up above you um, but we we should be seeing this light uh, or this shadow being casted uh, right above our heads and we should almost be in instant darkness um, you know due to the way um, well due to the fact that they're telling us that uh, it's going that the, the light is reflecting upward right now not across but yet I can turn around and look behind me um, and on this particular day I did do uh, a couple of time lapses um, pretty much uh, to the west of or east of me and um, you know, I'm looking at these and I'm saying okay if the light is being reflected directly up on them then how in the hell are these clouds back here being lit up now remember folks anytime you're in public you have no privacy so unfortunately I caught a couple people's faces in there it wasn't fat I mean it wasn't long enough to where anybody could get anything from it but again um, you can you can actually see the mirroring from these islands too um, this is one thing I really really like to do is observations um, there's a whole bunch of knowledge that you can get if you just use your common sense and uh, pick up on this now that area that I just came off of is the area that I'm going to do a time lapse on and I mean I am going to stick it in this video why, why not um, I think it's pretty cool okay um, this time lapse coming up was taken approximately 20 minutes uh, after the Sun departure um, and <laughs> Well, the, the footage that I took of this before, I was a little more zoomed in, um, but I actually was filming, and as I was filming, due to it being a low-light camera, um, I actually, um, it got dark, but of course, um, when I put on, uh, uh, put it on a 10-minute time lapse, I'm picking up what I pretty much see with my own eyes. Um, so, you know, you can see that, these lower clouds is what blocks out my vision of those clouds higher up with the light beaming off of them and then I threw this one in um, just to get, kind of give you an idea um, you know the refracted light coming off of the moon actually reflect reflects away from it it's not reflecting around it so you don't actually see behind it or around it uh, all right, and uh, actually, this was uh, taken on uh, uh, October 8th. There was supposed to be a meteor shower. I went out to catch it, but uh, obviously, with all these clouds, I wasn't going to catch anything. But I, uh, 
noticed uh, there was some flashing going on in the sky where I was located before I came, went to Bayport. Um, I wasn't out at the fishing pier. I was actually um, um, at one of the other docks at the boat ramp. Um, and what I, I did notice that uh, there was a thunderstorm off in this distance uh, from toward the south. So, um, you know, I decided to do some uh, time lapses and it was like surprising. So, I, you know, it was like, okay, let's zoom in a little closer to this. Um, and this is what I got. Um, now, you might say, well, big deal. You know, you're catching a thunderstorm off in the distance. Well, this was actually approximately 126 miles away from me. This was happening down... Uh, around uh, Fort Myers actually I think it was past Fort Myers because it was uh, well you'll see here yeah you know I got um, curious so I pulled out my uh, phone you know clicked on my radar and I was curious of where this was at um, the big lake that you you see there is Lake Okeechobee um, and you know, there's thunderstorms all down uh, on that coast. Um, so again, you know, I'm, I'm filming from uh, Bayport all the way down to there. Um, and you can even see, uh, you know, you can see the little blue dot. That's my location. It says Spring Hill. Um, <laughs> which I thought was actually pretty cool because I do a lot of filming of thunderstorms. I was trying to take a few pictures to kind of maybe see if I could catch it, but, uh, you know, with some pictures, I was trying different exposures, different, uh, you know, lengths of exposure. The more expo longer exposure time I gave it, um, you know, it, it just picked up so much of the light pollution, you could hardly see it. Um, so, I, you know, after taking these few pictures, I said, well, let me just go back to doing some time lapses and see how long. Um, you know, I can uh, film this thunderstorm for. Um, each one of these are each one of these time lapses were ten minute time lapses, um, and I I did like four of them, so that was forty minutes plus you know the pictures and a little bit of the time. So it was out there for quite a while, um, you know, just a flashing away. Um, but I thought it was pretty cool. Thought I'd share it with you. Um, I was going to make a separate video of this, but I said, you know what, I'm just going to add it with this other video. Um, it isn't that long. It's less than 15 minutes long, so, um, you know, maybe I can keep people's attention span. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, what was also cool was some of these planes that were flying in. They were either going to uh, St. Pete Airport or Tampa Airport, one or the other. Yeah, I... I can't tell because there's an island off to my right that uh, you know got a bunch of trees that are really high up I can't really see where these are going to kind of determine if they're going to one airport or the other all right thanks for watching